So we have three statement variables, P, Q, and R, and we're going to construct a truth table for um, this statement here. So to do that, we'll start by writing down uh, all of the possible truth values that we can have. So we have P, Q, and R. And then we need to take this statement and break it down into uh, simpler statements. So the natural thing to do now is to look at the P and Q piece. So P and Q. And you can put parentheses here if you want. It makes it a little bit cleaner. And then not R. Now, if you're concerned uh, with how many actual uh, possibilities you have, there's an easy way to do it. Let me go to the side and show you. It's a good way to check your answer. So there are two choices for each of these variables. Um, each variable can either be true or false. So there's two choices for the first variable, two choices for the second variable, and two choices for the third variable. So from something called the multiplication rule of counting, the number of choices for all three variables is the product. So two times two times two, so two cubed. So there's eight choices. So we should have eight different possibilities uh, for truth values for PQR. Let's go ahead and list them and let's try to do it in an organized fashion. So first let's do true, true, true. That's an easy one. That's one case. And then we can look at the case uh, where maybe one of them is false. So let's insert a false at the very end. So true, true, false. Then we can take this false and kind of you know arrange it or permute it throughout the throughout the variables. So let's put it in the middle now. So true, false, true. And the last case where exactly one of these is false would be false, true, true. Now let's look at all the possibilities where exactly two are false. So we can do true, false, false. Another possibility where exactly two are false would be false, false, true. And the last possibility where exactly two are false would be, I, I believe, false, true, false. So we've taken care of the possibility where none are false, all three possibilities where exactly one is false, all three possibilities where exactly two are false, and the last thing that remains is the case where all three are false. Now let's go ahead and finish this truth, truth table. So we're looking at the statement P and Q. Oh, I forgot to include the actual statement at the very end, right? We still need <laughs> the whole thing. So let me write it as P and Q or not R. So we definitely need that one to finish our truth table. Okay, so we're looking at P and Q. That will be true uh, if both P and Q are true, and that's the case, so this is true. Not R, well, that's going to be false. That's because it's the negation of R. R is true, so this should be false. And now we have P and Q or not R. So uh, that will be true when at least one of these is true, and we're good, because at least one is true. All right, back to P and Q. It will be true when they're both true. So in this case, this is true. Uh, the negation of R will be true in this case because over here you see R is false. And this statement here, it's an OR statement, so it will be true when both of these are true, or at least one of them is true. In this case, both are true, so this is also true. Okay, looking again at P and Q. Well, this time uh, Q is false, so the statement will be false. The negation of R, that's going to be the opposite of the statement here, so this will be false. And this one will be true if at least one of these is true. In this case, they're both false, so it's false. P and Q, uh, this will be false in this case. That's because the P here is false. They both have to be true for it to be true. The negation of R is the opposite, so this will be false. And in this case, this will be false because they're both false and it's an or statement. So um, as long as one of them is true, it's true. Otherwise, it's, it's false. Again, this one will be false here because uh, Q is false and the and requires both of them to be true. The negation of R here will be true. And uh, this one here will be true. And that's because it's an or statement and at least one of them has to be um, true 
In this case, the negation of R is true, so the OR statement that includes that is also true. Here we have uh, P and Q being false again, and that's because uh, they're both false. The negation of R this time is false. It's the opposite truth value of R. And in this case, uh, our OR statement uh, is going to be false again, and that's because they're both false. P and Q uh, again here will be uh, false because uh, the P is false. The negation of our OR statement is true, and in this case, uh, the, sorry, the negation of our R <laughs> is true. That's because R is false. And in this case, our OR statement at the end will be true because one of these is true. In the last case, uh, P and Q are both false. So the statement P and Q is false. R is false. The negation is true. And our OR statement at the end, well, at least one of these is true. So the whole thing is true. And that would be the truth table uh, for this statement here. A little bit more work. Uh, when you have uh, three variables. I hope this video has been helpful.